What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing um, a power ranking for MPLPH teams, okay? So uh, this is going to be a post week 2 video for MPLPH. Uh, so we've seen their games, we've seen how they're playing like in this season. And um, for me, I kind of have a good grasp, hopefully, of what the, uh, what the power rankings or what the rankings will look like by the end of the season, hopefully. Um, but a quick disclaimer before we start. This is my own opinion, my own power ranking. If you want to make your own power ranking and you disagree with mine, that is all right. You can comment that below on the comment section and you know do your own explaining and I can check it out, see it for myself, and maybe you can change my mind. All right, but anyways, let's let's start. So for number eight, we obviously have TNC because they they are starting off pretty rough right now. They are zero four, I believe. Um, I I've experienced this actually um, back in bread uh, when we were on a rebuilding season um, we were 10 players as well and we were 0-5 without winning a single game a single game I don't even know if TNC has won a single game but I know they're 0-4 in terms of series right so like their morale would be on 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 all-time low right now and I mean the only way to go is to go up like back when, uh, back in season nine when we were zero five, the thing we changed the most was our mindset, and we started playing so well, and we started getting those wins, those wins towards the end of the season. But it wasn't enough to qualify for the playoffs. So I think that's what TNC needs to do in order for them to go back up. Like just you know, reset, play confidently, play play like you do on scrims. Because back, uh, also, uh, going back to Season 9 of Bren, we were winning all the scrims. Almost all the, like, I would say 80% of the scrims, or maybe even 90% of the scrims, we were winning. But in the tournament, we were 0-5. Like, it was just a hit to their ego, I guess. Or, yeah, yeah maybe a hit to their ex uh, expectation. And the reality was... We just couldn't perform on stage. Maybe it was because of experience. They're nervous. I don't know. But these guys, a lot of them are veterans. They've already played in the MPL stage, so that shouldn't be an excuse anymore. But anyways, yeah. TNC number eight. They should reset their mindset and just play confidently. Play like they do on scrims, and they should do fine. Um, number seven. I would say probably next play Evos for me. All right, next play Evos for me. Um, they've won one series, but they are all rookies, right? They're, they're the Minana squad. I think they still need a lot of work. They could be seven or six for me, actually. Like, it's in between. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to say number six yet. We're going to talk about next play Evos first. All right, uh, yeah, I think they still need more experience on stage, most likely, with an audience in front. Maybe that's, that's what they're adjusting to. Um, it feels like... It's not the Minana squad, based on their playstyle. Their their game is different. Like, I would say they were stronger when they were Minana for some reason. All right. Um, the playstyle changed. I don't know if their hero pool change uh, hero pool changed much. But yeah, it just the the aura is different. Uh, when they rebranded for some reason, I <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, they didn't change anything. The coaching staff is still the same. The players are still the same. The only thing different is the management, but I don't. I don't think the management is doing anything to, to affect the the, the you know the gameplay of the players. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I don't know why next play Evos is playing like I was actually, um, expecting more from this Minana squad. Okay, I was expect expecting them to be like number four or three even. Uh, with the Minana squad, but with their recent performance, I'm not really convinced. So yeah, if you're an Expert Evos fan and you're watching this, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm not convinced just yet. So yeah, let's move on to number six. Um, for number six, I think Smart Omega. All right, Smart Omega for me. Um, the reason why is I think for me I, they're lacking on the drafting phase a little bit. And they're lacking more on their somewhat identity a little bit as well. Uh, we have Storm there uh, now, who used to be um, uh, who used to be in Brand as well, and they have this new, not new, but like 
Chakno is out, so they have a new main tank now, which is Miko. Obviously, I would say Chakno is definitely better than their current tank right now, and maybe that's what's hitting them right now. That's why they're they're performing like this. Kelra is still Kelra. Uh, Ryzen is still Ryzen, still pretty good. Uh, and Renzio, Renzio is still the veteran Renzio who just does his job and you know makes sure he does his role. So, yeah, I think they're really lacking more on the Romer side for, for Smart Omega. Um, yeah, the Romer isn't doing as well. That's why their performance is like this. Um, but please, don't, don't bash Miko. <laughs> it's just my opinion. Alright, he just needs to step up just a little bit more for them to do good. Okay? But they, they could. I, I could. I could see the potential in, in this team if they build the chemistry, keep playing as this five could also be the same way as they used to play with Etomax and Chakmin, right? So, yeah, um, I think Storm was a really good pickup for them as well. Yeah. So, for number five, we have Onik PH. All right, um, this team, they actually had Rapidute before, but he had to focus school. So now they have Kekadat, which is, I think he used to be a mage player, but now he's playing Rome. So a switch in roles might have affected them, and they're not playing as well, alright? Um, they're not playing as good as they would, in my opinion, if they were to play with Rapidute. Because Rapidute is, he's a roamer main from the beginning. And, you know, it's always hard to, to switch up roles, I believe. Yeah, I believe Kekadat was a mage back then, in Signal. Yeah, I don't remember him as a roamer. But anyways, um... They're actually finding their groove, right? Especially in scrims. I think they have their... They're starting to figure out their identity. Uh, yeah. The way they pick they pick their heroes, and the way they prioritize specific heroes, their their power picks, is actually really good. It's it's like, it's getting there. It's not there yet, but it's, it's getting there. It, once they figure it out, this team could be actually quite scary, to be honest with you. They don't have like a, I would say, a star player, you could say. Like a standout player, not a star player, a standout player. They, they all just work as one team, which is, that's what you want to see. Because right now, in the current meta, you cannot really solo carry. It's better if you work as a team rather than, you know, pouring it all out and just one person is performing. You need everybody performing. So yeah, Onyx PH, they're, they're quite close to, uh, to finding their identity, I would say, for this, for this team. Um, yeah, next up, RSG Slate. All right, uh, we have RSG Slate. They picked up H2, and they, uh, they also have Exert now on mid lane. I would say the Demon Kite Aqua Combo is still a lot more scarier, and why is that? Um, I would say Demon Kite is probably better at playing utility than H2. Uh, H2 really specializes in Assassin, and he's still adjusting. Um, in this current meta, I don't think you can play Assassin every single game. It's just, it's, it's hard. It's really hard to play Assassin every single game, unless you're probably as good as Kyrie, and if you draft, if your draft conditions meet. That's it. That's the only way you can play assassins. But assassins are still viable, definitely. He doesn't play Fanny. So that's also a toll, even though he's an assassin main. Um, you know, so that's why I have RSG on number four. I would say their original MSC champion lineup is still a lot scarier. Exort is doing really quite surprising, actually. But the problem with Exort is probably just a little bit on the hero pool side. He specializes in Kadita. So, so good. You, are, you guys already saw his Kadita, right? He's so good with Kadita. One of his power picks. And um, their gold lane is still super strong. Eman and their XP lane is still super freaking strong, which is nuts. So, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not looking too bad for RSG. Um, I would say if H2 could adjust a little bit more and Exort just keep picking his power picks... And um, Coach Panda sticks to his team's playstyle. Because Exort has a specific playstyle. Play um, you know, there's some mages that are like long range type of mages, like Farsa, Eve.
they just like to stay in the back line. Exhort is more of like, like an assassin. He reminds me kind of like a few, to be honest, because few is his playstyle is similar to that as well. Yeah, because few used to be a jungler main, right? So that's why he has that you know that instinct or that playstyle. So yeah, if they stick to that, I think RSG would not do so bad. They could even get number three, to be honest with you, right? But speaking about number three, we have Blacklist. Um, I th I don't think Blacklist is as good as before, obviously, because um, Edward, I believe Edward is benched now. He's still in the MPL lineup, but I think Renegade is going to be playing more than Edward. Edward is just there for a... Just in case. Just in case, let's say shit goes down <laughs> like uh, if things go really bad edward is they there to save the day uh, and um the problem with renegade he's good renegade is a good playmaker the problem with renegade is sometimes the timing is bad and his hero pull and the xp lane might not be the best that's that's the biggest problem they have but if you're teamed up with vuis it makes your job so much easier because they pretty much tell you what, what the hell to do around the map. So all you have to do is follow and listen. Alright, VYs. That's, that's what's so good about VYs. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Season 9 Blacklist with, with no VYs. But Edward and Oheb was there. You see how the team just fell down. Like the, the heart of the team. or it, it was just not there. It was not even close to how they're performing now. right? And then VYs came back. And now they're back at it again. That's how strong of a presence or of a core VYS is all right there's just no matter wh whoever you pair him up with they don't have to be super good they will shine like their new mid laner is really good right now you uh, really surprised with this mid lane I'm not surprised actually because I've been seeing him since the um, Harlika days and he was one of the standout players for that team so I expected him to be good, and I knew he was going to be better, especially with the guidance of Venus, most likely, teaching teaching um, him all this stuff. Their new gold laner is not too bad as well. Um, I'm surprised that they didn't put up Dominic and Al, which I don't understand, because they've won a gold medal, they have experience, they're good. I don't know what happens behind the scenes, but that's Blacklist. Um, they're not going to do too bad this season. Um, it's not a rebuilding season either. People are just taking a rest. They're most likely going to be focusing on M5 with Ed, uh, Edward and Oheb once um, that season comes up. All right. So for number two, all right, I have Bren. Okay. I used to be Bren, but I'm not trying to be biased. They won the Seabull qualifiers recently, right? They even beat Echo. I don't want to make it an excuse for Echo, but... Um, Let's put Echo at number one, but we'll be talking about Bren because obviously that's the only team left. I don't want to make make any excuse for Echo, because during that time before Cebo qualifiers, I believe they were having a vacation, Echo, right? And that's why they didn't have enough pre preparation for for the Cebo qualifiers, and they weren't on tip top shape for the Cebo qualifiers, and that's why Bren took it. Um, that shouldn't be a valid reason as well for. Um, for Echo, because if they really wanted to represent the Philippines, um, they would play more. But then again, um, fatigue, right? Fatigue. It's important to focus on MPL PH as well. Uh, you don't want to affect your player's mentality, your player's um, health, and stuff like that. So I understand what, what um, how Echo is actually handling this. And that is also a really good choice for Echo. I believe that. Um, you don't want to have the champion's curse where you don't take a break, and you just want to keep going, and you're tired, and... All of a sudden, you're not performing as well, and you're gonna go, gonna go down. You're not gonna play as well, and you're gonna, you're gonna have arguments with your teammates. But anyways, going back to Bren, they're looking good. Um, and if you're asking why did I leave Bren, it's not because of the players, it's not because of the management. All is well with Bren. I love Bren to this day, still, still to this day. I'm still very close to them, um, and I'm still rooting for them actually. Um, but I believe this is where they belong, which is the number two spot for now. For now, right? I still think they could step up a little bit more. Uh, we saw in the first week that um, when Echo faced them, it was a 2-0 for Echo. Um, they were on tip-top shape because they were practicing beforehand. But yeah, Bren, so good. 
right now? Um, they're developed now. Okay, they're developed now, so all you have to do is just draft correctly. Draft of their playstyle, and you should be good to go. Uh, you should be good to go. Um, some very minor mistakes here and there, but Flap, Flap really stepped up. Like, he doesn't used to play like this. Um, yeah, I would say Flap stepped up a lot. That's why they're, they're just this strong. Because before, Flap was distracted, you could say. Um, probably, uh... Yeah, distracted with other stuff. I'm not gonna say anything else. I don't wanna embarrass him. But anyways, yeah, now he's focused. I can tell he's focused. They've been grinding more. And from what I know, they stay on a boot camp house now. They don't stay on the headquarters. They don't go to the headquarters anymore. They stay on a boot camp house now. So they could grind as much as they want. They could stream as much as they want. Like uh, if you notice the champions, uh, recent champions like Echo, right? After practice, they would play as five man and that same five every single time. That adds chemistry every single time. Same with Blacklist before. After practice, VYs would stream and all five of them are playing together. And playing as five, even if it's not too serious and just having fun, that bond just makes it stronger. The chemistry is just stronger. You know, and you know, uh, the stress, I guess it's stress relieving as well if you're playing in rank and you're not taking as, as seriously, but you're a five man. You guys are not arguing, you just want to have fun, want to enjoy the game. You, you're not forgetting to enjoy the game. And Brand Esports is starting to do that more. And I think it's really scary if they keep just doing what they're doing right now. They could definitely, they, they have a good chance of taking season, season 11. And I wouldn't even be mad if they take season 11 even though I left, I would be super happy for them, for Brand Esports. So I want to see them uh, step up just a little bit more. Just keep doing what they're doing and they're, they're good to go. Uh, for Echo, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. This is like an all-star team. Alright, at first, back in Season 9, I thought that Echo would be very hard to manage. They, they were pretty much an all-star team. So I was like expecting egos might clash if they don't manage correctly. But good thing for the coaching staff and the management, they are, they made these players much. They, these players matured so well. Carl matured so much. Like you could see Carl like trash talking before, right? Now he's he he's like a legit adult. The his mindset, the way he approaches his teammates, the way he approaches the game, he's willing to adjust to the meta. He's willing to. Do uh, he he's willing to be a team player like this kid matured so much so I'm really proud of Carl for doing that. Um, Yahweh is uh, you know he's almost like a celebrity so back in season nine when they got Yahweh I was I was worried about that too he might have an an e ego issue I I don't know Yahweh so I'm just assuming at that point but good thing he doesn't and he was willing to work with his team but yeah they're looking still so strong during this season. And hopefully they don't get the championship curse. Um, I want, you know, I still want them to keep uh, thriving. And um, hopefully uh, this Echo team um, doesn't experience the same thing that Brand M2 experienced. Right. Carl knows what, what I'm talking about. But anyways, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Echo should still be here. Probably the best XP laner right now in MPLPH is probably Sanford. Stepped up, like he did. He did not play like this during ne his next play days. He stepped up for some reason. Hey, it's just the way you develop players, I guess. All right, I guess Echo just developed Sanford and utilized them a lot better. So um, Sanji also, like Sanji used to be a next play, right? Um, well, not technically a next play, but uh, PPG, I believe, or I forgot AP or PPGs, one of those teams. But yeah, he's playing so well right. They're pretty much an all star team. So if they keep playing like like they are doing right now, if their egos don't clash against each other, they don't have any problems internally, Echo will just keep going. The only thing that's holding them back is probably fatigue. And if their passion runs out, since they've been playing for so long, that's the only thing that I could see Echo going down. But other than that, Echo is still looking strong. All right, but yeah, that's it for my power rankings. That's my top one through eight. Um, Echo number one, Brand number two, Blacklist number three, RSG Slate number four, Onyx PH number five, six, Smart Omega, Next Play Evils number seven, and eight on TNC. Alright, uh, yeah, let me know your 
own power rankings on the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what you guys think about my opinion with what I said on each teams. Um, and yeah, that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit the thumbs up button as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Peace.